Hi, it's Chloe. Thank you for downloading the World Have Your Say podcast from the BBC. If you want more information and details of our terms of use, go to bbcworldservice.com forward slash podcast. Enjoy the show. We've heard the news from the BBC. Now it's your turn. You can post on facebook.com slash world have your say or get in touch via Twitter at BBC underscore WHYS. Welcome to World Have Your Say. Hello, the global economy is entering a dangerous place, according to the head of the IMF. The dark language used by Christine Lagarde and other leading economists yesterday led to stock markets across the world tumbling. A slight recovery today in Europe followed politicians queuing up to reassure the markets by declaring they're ready to take action to stabilise them. But is it enough? Is the gloomy picture reflective of what you're experiencing? Are you fearful of what the next 12 months might hold? Or do you think politicians like the British Prime Minister David Cameron are exaggerating when they say things like, we're not quite staring down the barrel, but the pattern is clear. I'm Chloe Tilly, and for the next 30 minutes, we're joined by a banker, a trader and a journalist to answer your questions. If you don't want to make an international call, text country code 447786206080 and put call me in your message. Thank you for being with us. In the next few minutes, we'll speak to people in Germany and in the UK. But let's begin our conversation with speaking to Dr. Andrew Freris, who is Chief Investment Advisor for Asia at BNP Paribas Wealth Management. He joins us on the line from Hong Kong. And sitting with me here in the World Have Your Say studio is Alessio Rustani, who is a day trader, professional speaker and mentor on stock market activity. Alessio, I'll start with you first because it's it's a pleasure to have a banker sitting with me, a trader with me. Um, So many times, um, we've wanted to speak to people over, well, since 2008, since the crisis. Just give us your view on what's happening right now and how worried we should be. Uh, hi, Chloe. Uh, I've been saying for a few months now um, that the government, the politicians, the media are unprepared uh, for what is about to happen or what has already happened, as we've seen yesterday. Uh, I've been saying it on my Facebook page and my blogs and my emails. Basically, a global recession is coming our way and it's going to hit us like a freight train. And guess what? It's already, uh, we've seen the already beginning signs of it. In fact, uh, the first signs, the first signals that a recession was coming was back just before August. Why? Well, first of all, everybody pretty much remembers what happened in August. Huge volatility. The markets went down. When markets crashed, right? Uh, what people did not uh, probably realize is that just before then, there was a huge shift of money out of stocks, and into bonds, okay? I'm talking about 10-year bonds, 30-year bonds, okay? That, you, and that usually is the first initial sign that something is wrong. So that's something. showing a jittering on yeah. the market, if you like. It's almost like a precursor, if you like. Let's br- bring in Dr. Right. Andrew Ferris. Do you, do you agree that we're at the beginning of another recession? Well, I'm afraid this is Alice in Wonderland kind of, of statements because recession means whatever you want to mean. The Americans use recession as, a, and I'm sorry, it sounds gibbledygook, and possibly it is, Two quarter on quarter negative growth back to back. Well, uh, Japan has had that for quite a while. The United States is likely to have one. Asia most definitely is not in any kind of recession. And I'm afraid I'm a little bit upset that whatever happens to the G3 economies, and that is United States, Europe, and Japan, is extrapolated across the world. Second quarter GDP growth rates in Asia are all strong, positive, and in some cases even growing. So to the immortal words of uh, Sam Goldwyn, please include me out of your recession. Okay. So in that sense, you're saying there's going to be more of a split. There's going to be uh, Asia is going to be moving forward, the likes of China benefiting, and the, the traditional um, global superpowers, if you like, of the US and Europe are, are going to head into recession. Uh, two parts here. Okay. Uh, one should never, ever, never, ever confuse what happens to the stock markets and what happens to the real economies. And the second part is that Asia, in real terms, the actual economies, the day-to-day things, have decoupled from uh, the big economies a long time ago. Not, however, our stock markets. The stock markets in Asia follow very closely what happens anywhere else. And I think uh, uh, one could be gravely misconstrued what is happening and what's likely to happen if one is judged uh, by the fact that, uh, let's say, the Chinese stock market is something like uh, 10 to 15 percent down year to date, but the Chinese economy is growing at 9.5 percent as we talk. If that's a recession, I'm immigrating. 
um, with all great respect, um, sir, uh, Dr. Um, Freres. Freres. Um, I'm sure you're very knowledgeable, sir. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to just comment on that. You cannot separate the economy from the stock market. I can tell you, every professional trader who's listening to this will tell you this, that um, the stock markets are a leading indicator of the economy. In fact, the stock markets will re reveal things that haven't even happened yet. Why? Because guess what? The big institutions, I'm talking about the smart money, the smart money, the hedge funds, the, the institutions, what actions they take will leave trails, they leave footprints. If you follow those footprints, you will see signals as to what's really going on behind the markets. Okay? Uh, here's the thing. You, there's a joke among traders, by the way, Chloe, that no two economists will ever agree on the economy. No we have econ noticed that even yeah, on this program. <laughs> absolutely. Well, I'm not an economist. <laughs> sure. But you see, I don't have a view about the economy. I don't really care. I follow what I see in front of me. Here's one thing. While many economists can sit on this panel and talk to you about, oh, the GDP is this and uh, growth is this, there is one thing that does not lie, which is the stock market. Okay. What, when you, just one second. Hang on. Let me finish. Let me finish. If you look at a chart of the stock market right now, what you see on that chart is, not, is, not, is the, real, the reality. That does not lie. You will see patterns. You will see signals on the chart. If you follow those signals, you will see what's really going on behind the scenes. And the public and the media will only figure it out once it already has happened. So I'm saying this to all your listeners right now. Be careful because you're about to see the next leg of this uh, recession. There's going to be another crash, a big major crash. The markets are going to come down. I know it sounds like a doomsday say I know I don't want to sound like a doomsday say uh, uh, you know, a scaremonger. But believe me, this is what's going to happen. Okay, question. Uh, in the last two years, the worst performing market in Asia, consistently worst performing in negative terms, actually two and a half years, was China. Now, if the Chinese equity market was a leading indicator, well, I'm sorry, then Alessio, you have to explain to me how come China consistently grew at 9 and 10 percent. I'm sorry, you said you're not an economist, and I'm afraid I have to agree. Okay, I think we should move on to, to, some, to some different subjects. Okay. Can, I, can I just ask, Alessio, if we follow your view that um, we are headed for a recession, a worldwide recession, or a more localized recession, whether it's Europe mm. or the US, is there anybody who actually benefits from it? Um, is there anyone who benefits from it? Do bankers benefit from it? Do traders benefit? Is there any benefit for anybody? Uh, what, from the crash? Yeah. From absolutely. Um, in fact, I'll tell you this. Everybody who is probably listening to this, uh, listen, uh, Chloe, I've got a confession to make. I, I wake up every night and day praying for another recession. Okay. Now, that sounds like I'm a bad guy, right? No, listen. I've been pr praying for this moment for three years. Why? Because you can make a lot of money if you know what you're doing in a crash. Um, here's what but you can make a lot of no, money no, no, as a no. trader. I, I can't. No, yes, you can. I, I, I don't understand Chloe, it. Chloe, guess what? If I, um, I'm not allowed to give investment advice, obviously, on the radio. But look, I can tell everybody here what to do, and they can make money from this crash. Here's one fact I want to tell everybody here. More millionaires have been made in the 30s depression than any other period of time in history. This is a fact. More millionaires were made. Why? Because a small group of people in the 30s knew what to do. And they were prepared. They made a, they made a killing. And uh, I, I, this is a fact, too. Ma there's a few people actually who made a huge amount of money in the crash of 2008. How do you make money in a crash? You, uh, you basically invest in those things that basically rise in value when a crash happens. Right? Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to mention some things that actually will go up in value. Uh, let's, not, let's not go into that right, right. now because it's all, it's all going to probably become quite complicated. But yeah. wherever you're listening around the world, we're talking about the global economic crisis. We're joined by Alessio Rustani. He's a day trader. He's a professional speaker and mentor on stock market activity. Also, Dr. Andrew Ferris, who's a chief investment advisor for Asia at BMP Paribas Wealth Management. If you've got a question for either of them, you can pick up the phone. You can call us, country code 44 20 70 83 72 72. Interesting, Alessio was saying you can actually make a lot of money in a recession. Be interested to get your thoughts on that. Let's bring in Vivian who joins us on the line from the UK. Also Beatrice who is in Germany. Uh, Vivian, um, welcome to World Have Your Say. What do you make of what Alessia is saying? Lots of money can be made in a recession. Do you feel positive? Um, I quite agree with him. I think also that um, the stock market traders in particular rely upon um, volatility. They don't want a stable market because they can't make any money from it. But when, when it goes too far, as it appears it has done this time, it does actually impact on ordinary people's lives. Has it, has it affected you? Uh, Hi, it's